Now what is up my fellow prod coders welcome to this video and today we will continue working on our JWT based server to server communication with the HMAC digital signature. Now in the last video we already um, yeah, finished this authentication, authenticate uh, middleware and um, we have a good part here already set up. Um, but there's like one more thing. So at the moment we don't do anything with our server. We haven't even run the application um, and I think we need to change that. But let's do a couple of things. So since we have uh, now this config object, what we can do is we can just pull in uh, more configurations. I will just say, uh, where is it? Config. No, we're in index and we need dot config. Yeah like this and instead of hard coding uh, port.8080 I'm just going to say okay this is config.port and here I'm going to also adapt the message and now you also know why we use uh, string interpolation here simply because we want to uh, customize like this method. Now uh, I think what we haven't done so far is we haven't added like a script yet so let's just do that let's just say um, maybe def and we were just going to say node index.js ah, you know what maybe maybe we can install nodemon we can say npm install save def nodemon and once we have done that we can just do uh, maybe let's wait for the package json to be updated because otherwise this might lead to a couple of issues. Yes, and here it is. Now we can say no amount index.js. Okay, um, now this will not do much, but we just don't have to stop and restart the server all the time, which is kind of handy. So theoretically we can say npm run dev and it should start. Okay, config port is undefined um, and that is because we are trying to pull this like from an environment variable, but this environment variable is not set up yet. Okay, so let's maybe create two scripts here instead of this dev then. Let's say um, server A and server A is going to be, I think, hmm, what can we do? Uh, we can set these um, environment variables that we need. So for one, we can say, I want a port of uh, 3000 maybe. I have a partner server port uh, of 8080 and a server name of server A. And then I will do node one. Uh, maybe let's do node index.js and then we can copy this and we can say uh, can paste this and we can say this will be server B and server B will be the exact same thing the only difference is it will have a different port and it needs to point to server A as the target port its name is server B okay that looks okay. Maybe we can just name this dev single. This one is just interesting to uh, to know uh, if we have any issues. So say we write something that cannot be interpreted, then we can run this. But not sure if we need it anyway. Okay, so now we have these two uh, scripts that will start up like... So we are technically able to start up two servers. Um, let's just try this out. We can say npm run server A. Okay, and it's listening on port 3000. And um, yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, the only thing we could do is we could go back and we could do something like uh, config.server name. And I think this one should be better now if we start again yeah then we see server a listening on port 3000 okay that looks pretty good and if we run server b then we run server b on port 8080 okay so at least our server is running 
But what we don't have at the moment is we do not have any routes in here. And that's the next thing that I would like to change. So I'm just going to make a directory and I'm just going to call it routes. And in there, I will add an index.js file. And in total, we are going to add um, two routes. So let's first pull in like the dependencies we need. So let's say const express, require express. And what else do we need? We definitely need this uh, authenticate middleware uh, simply because we need to um, block requests if they are not authorized. So that's why I'm just going to pull that in as well. And I think I'm just going to make a router. So I always prefer to, you know, have a routes directory and then index.js and have like all the routes there because it's just easier. Um, okay, so we want to have two routes. Um, one route should be uh, produce. And um, this route at the moment it will just do nothing. And the reason we're going to have we will need this is that if we want server A to send something to server B, then we're just going to call this endpoint with uh, Postman. And then it should make a call to server B. And it should only make a call to server B um, to the consume endpoint. So that will be the one that is actually checking the uh, uh, whether the JWT token is valid or not. Okay, so I'm just going to add an empty function for now. And what I will just do is I will plug in our authenticate middleware before that. And then afterwards, I'm going to um, module.exports equals router. I'm going to export that router. So just to recap, we have two endpoints. Um, this produce endpoint is going to be called by us via Postman. That's why we don't have any authentication there because otherwise it would be kind of hard to test. So in reality, you would probably not have like this endpoint. Um, but otherwise, it's just hard for us to, to trigger like a request to the respective other server. And if we hit the produce endpoint, what's going to happen is that our server is going to call this consume endpoint of the partner server. And uh, at the moment, this is not implemented. So we need to do that. But maybe we can uh, plug in this router before we continue. So let's go to our index.js file. And I think we need to do a couple of things here. So for one, we want to um, plug in like the JSON parser of Express because later on we want to, you know, log out the payload or something. So we need to parse the uh, actual request and uh, make sure that we receive a JavaScript object. And uh, what we also want to do is we probably want to plug in our router. So I'm just going to call this router and then I'm going to import the router. So I'm going to say const router equals require route, um, routes. Okay, so what we basically did is we say, okay, we pull in this router, we plug it in under API. And now in this router, we have two endpoints. So if we call slash API produce, we're going to make a call to the partner server to the consume endpoint and vice versa. If we make a call to say we call server A, we call produce, then it's going to send a request to slash API slash consume of server B and vice versa. So if we call produce on server B, it will send a message to server A to the slash consume endpoint. Cool. So, but that is not implemented yet, but let's just make sure that it's still running. Okay. So apparently we don't have any typos or anything that looks okay. So I think we can stop the video right now and continue in the next one where we will actually implement um, these two endpoints. We're probably going to add a controller to that uh, for that. And uh, I think we will also need to update our token service. Because at the moment we can only verify, but we also want to 
uh, build tokens. I think that's probably the next thing we're going to do. But that one will also be pretty easy, I guess. Cool. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, please make sure to give the video a thumbs up. Uh, leave me a comment if you have a question. Um, you can also reach out to me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is at Production Coder. And I've also added a link in the video description down below uh, for an email list. So if you want to have a say in what we do next on this channel, then you can sign up there and uh, then you can give a little bit of feedback. Cool. So thanks again for watching. Uh, please subscribe to the channel and I see you in the next video.